from. The etymology of the word, the word traces its origins back to the word crucified. It was an excruciating, the most painful method of, of torture and death that mankind has ever conceived. But then starts Jesus' road to Calvary. The Bible says that the Roman soldiers, they took their fists and the Bible says they buffeted him, beat him in the face and then ripped out his beard. They, 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 they flogged him and they mocked him and they said, tell us who hit you. They made a mockery of our Savior. Then they began the, the awful, awful, what we call the cat of nine tails. I actually have one right here. This would be the cat of nine tails that they would use. But rather than just strips of leather, they would take shards of glass, rock, pottery, anything sharp. And, and what they would do is they would stretch the, 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 the victim over a pole and tie them down at the very ankles to, to make, to stretch the muscles of the back. And then they would proceed to take that whip and whip it around them and that whip would curl around the body and as it latched onto the flesh of that human then they would rip it back in, in, in uh, scourging and skinning alive our precious savior do you see the savior this morning do you see what he's going through right now that 39 times over and over and over and over over and over again, Jesus Christ was subjected to one of the most excruciating forms of torture. When flesh after flesh and muscle and sinew would be ripped and stripped across our Savior. So that so much that you would be seeing his bones, his rib cage, his inner organs. Do you see the Savior this morning? Do you see what he's going through? After 39 times, they would lay the whip down. And then they bore the cross upon our precious Savior. They made him carry the load of the cross. And he walked the road called the Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering, on his way to Calvary. Golgotha, the place of the skull. And as they, as they put the cross on the ground, the Bible says he laid himself down. He didn't have to be forced down. He laid his life down for you. He laid himself down as a sacrifice for you. He wasn't forced there. He went there of his own volition. Nobody drug him to Calvary. He walked there of his own choosing. They laid him on the cross. And the Bible says that Roman soldiers, they took his hands and they nailed nails in his hands. I want you to picture this now. I'm not talking carpenters about those framing nails. I'm talking about chisels. You picturing this now? Do you see the Savior? Chisels. They put right between the, the joints. As the Bible says, that not a bone would be broken of our precious Savior. And they put that between the joints. And then they proceed to nail those nails into that cross. Over and over to fixate our precious Savior on that cruel cross. Same with the other wrists. They would nail those nails into that precious Savior's wrist. They fixed his feet to the cross. Do you see the Savior? The Bible says that they lifted their cross up and they dropped that cross down in the hole, which would, that fact alone, what would happen would have dislocated and disjointed the majority of joints in our, in our precious Savior's body. The action of him being lowered into that cross and dropped would have dislocated him in many areas of his body. And then we start the cruel torture that Jesus would have been subjected to. Jesus would have been laying on that cross. And the way that they would fixate the, the, the victim on that cross is they would force him to be slouched. And, in for, and I want you to picture this now. Do you, I hope you see him today. Listen. Hey, hey, listen. I'm talking about Jesus today. He was fixing that cross. And medical scholars say that that in order for our Savior to breathe, he would have to pull on those chisels and those nails on his wrist to do <gasps> over and over again. He would push up on those nails on his feet, pull up on those nails in his wrist just to take 
a breath. Over and over and over again for hours. I'm talking about my Savior today. Do is a sin because we're so used to that kind of a lifestyle. We have no idea that for every sinful feeling we felt in our heart and every sinful thought that you and I had imagined, not just outward things, do you understand that? Not just outward things that you take lightly, but also every thought that you had and every feeling that you had in your heart, there was a lash for that. There was a lash for that. For Jesus Christ to substitute for you. For Jesus Christ to take your sins upon himself. This is the reason why he had to take a whipping. You know, he could have just skipped on toward the cross. After all, wasn't it the cross that saved us? Wasn't it the precious blood that he shed can wash away our sins? Why not just skip? and head toward the cross. Why did he have to be chastised? Because sin must be beaten and there is a lash required and that was common sense back in those days. Jesus Christ, since he died at a time period where it was understood by different cultures around the world that for every sin or for every wrongdoing committed, you must receive a lash. And that is the reason why Jesus Christ was whipped. But didn't you know this was not just some normal whip? It was not just some normal lashing. Yeah. Friend, the whip that he had was the cat o' nine tails. And if you were to study about the cat o' nine tails, these, these cords would be contingent and will be hanging on a whip. And with these different cords coming out, it would contain broken pieces of bones. And you know how sharp and how hard those bones can be. Those bones are the things that hold your whole body together and keep you walking. And especially with some of you who might be a little bit more heavy or too big, the bones are that strong to hold you together. And those were broken pieces that were added to the whip. And they would put pieces of glass as well. And they would put even the nails, some nails within those cords. Why Jesus Christ, he couldn't just receive the nails from the old rugged cross. My Jesus Christ had to receive the nails before he was nailed onto the cross. And those nails, when they're and those broken pieces of bone and glass was attached to the cords. That Roman soldier, as he whipped on Jesus' back, what would happen? It's pretty obvious, you would know, those broken pieces and the nail especially would fasten to his skin. And especially if it was a strong or heavy Roman soldier, when he whipped it on his back, it was like a hammer that was already nailed onto Jesus' body. And then that Roman soldier, he has to do a second lash. As he pulled it out, the skin tore itself, arteries, and the muscles sliced wide open. And doctors and medical reporters and those who researched the cat o' nine tails and Jesus' death would describe it as something so cruel that sometimes even the bones inside, hiding behind those muscles, could be seen from the cat o' nine tails. As a matter of fact, everybody, uh, not everybody, excuse me, but many would die from the whipping because of such awful, such awful beatings that they received. The whipping will sometimes expose the veins inside. Sometimes the whipping would even expose a little bit of that rib cage. As that whip was slashed across Jesus Christ, as he was hanging on an overhead beam. The whip wrapped around, you can imagine, his rib cage here. And then it fastened. And as they pulled it out, it tore it open. 
he didn't have to be whipped. He could just go to the cross. But see, he had to be chastised for the sin that you thought was not a big deal. So that you can, so that you can escape the whipping of sin. You know, the crown of thorns was not some kind of decoration that they put on Jesus to mock him. Do you know why he had to take the crown of thorns? Because the curse of sin was thorns. Didn't you know that your sin is what polluted this planet? You thought you're an environmentalist. You thought you could save this planet. But you have no idea that sin is such a heavy price that not only you hurt yourself, you would hurt all of creation around you. Look at the fruits of the liberals and all these environmentalists, how they protect their trees, how they protect the earth and try to make creation beautiful. But in the midst of beauty, there's garbage. There's addiction and drugs and crime and sin in the midst. Such a strange mixture in this Bay Area. That's evidence that creation is still hurting and tarnished because of sin. Sin. People wouldn't litter if they didn't know about sin to begin with. If they had a conscience about sin, they wouldn't litter. See, sin is the cause. Do you, don't, you, don't you and I hate the suffering in our world and the pain that you and I are going through? And we ask God, why? Why can't you make life better for me? Because of sin. Sin corrupted creation itself. That's why some of you are struggling with the job. That's why you, some of you are struggling with disease and health and you have to get over the cold. Because sin caused a curse that corrupted all of creation. Isaiah 53, 3 through 6. He is despised and rejected of men and a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised as we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his, to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Psalm 22, 14 through 18. I am poured out like water, and my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death, for the dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and they stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Romans 10.9 That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and sh shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13 For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Trust in Jesus today for salvation. Look upon him. Look to Jesus. He is the only way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except through Jesus Christ alone.